Hey folks, Dan Furrier here with your closing bell for August 28th, 2024. So we saw mortgage rates ease down just a little bit more today. The trajectory is really nice, uh, but the market just closed and Nvidia uh, came out with their earnings and it blew away the numbers. But the stock price is, is basically crashing right now. And I won't say crashing, it's up thousands of percentage. Uh, so here's what it looks like. NVIDIA reports 122% revenue growth and surging demand, but the market is down. It was down, uh, what is it? two or three percent during the market and now it's even dropping six more percent i don't know what else uh analysts want on this i've been a i've been an owner of nvidia since about 2018 so i'm not complaining i made a lot of money in their stocks i'm not telling you what to do would i be a buyer of this right now i'm i'm as bullish on this thing as i am bitcoin for the long run so that's my take on it don't trade on my stuff don't listen to my stuff you know is 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 guidance just, I'm just want to give you some information as we go through. So a lot of the market's been hanging on what NVIDIA's earnings would come back at, and I, I don't really think they're going to complain about this one. So why the market's, uh, why the, the after hours stock is down, don't really know there. But the good news is right through here, they're expecting uh, rates to continue to be cut. But this analyst that was interviewed on CNBC today is kind of in my ballpark. They're anticipating 25 basis point cuts. And, and I know I'm beating this like a dead horse because this is in vogue right now, folks. We want to know what the heck the Federal Reserve is going to do. And it's not just home buyers. It's also the equity markets. And it's the whole world is basically figuring out, you know, what is what is the U.S. doing with their interest rates? So check out this video. I think you'll find it informative. And then when we come back, I'm going to give you a lot of information or the economic calendar for tomorrow. Uh, because if you haven't locked in today, tomorrow might be a little bit of a game changer. And I'll explain that in a second. So let's get over to the video. And then once they're finished with this, I'm going to explain to you guys what's on the calendar for tomorrow and how it might be bigger news than most people expect. So let's get it. Let's take it away. For NVIDIA and my next guest says it's also getting higher for the Fed to cut by 50 basis points next month. In fact, she only sees two cuts total this year, uh, each just 25 in September and December, less than the four cuts that the market is betting on. But it's not because of her confidence in the economy. She sees a bifurcation as her playing a bit of defense. For more on what she's seeing and how she's positioning, I'm joined by Victoria Fernandez, Chief Market Strategist at Crossmark Global Investments. Victoria, great to have you. My pleasure. Okay, so no 50. No 50. I think there's too much, as you mentioned, bifurcation in this economy. We've seen it in the consumer for quite a while. The low-income consumer and now even the middle-income consumer really struggling. It was that high-end consumer kind of holding things up. And then as we went through retail earnings, we saw how now even the high-end consumer is starting to move down the spectrum and what they're spending and where they're spending. Walmart being a perfect example of gaining that share because higher income consumers are looking for bargains, looking to see where they can get all those $5 deals we're hearing about everywhere. Um, and then look at the data that's coming in, John. Lots of bifurcation there as well. Capital goods, takeout transportation, that was negative. We're seeing contraction in business spending. We're seeing contraction in some of the elements that feed into GDP. So I think we have to be a little bit cautious here, even though the idea of rate cuts coming at the next meeting is kind of booing the stock market. So if we're getting all that, contraction, why isn't that a signal that the Fed's job has been mostly done so they can maybe more dramatically ease off uh, right now so that the, the uh, economic signals, which have been mixed, they have. don't get worse? Yeah, I think kind of the question that you and I would ask. It's about time these guys ask just the basic questions. So let's see where her response is. That's why they want to take their time. I think that's why they're being very cautious in how they're signaling what their plans are going to be. 25 makes a lot of sense for this first cut. We are not in a recession at this point in time. We actually thought we would be by now, but the consumer has held up strong enough in order to sustain the economy. So we're not in that recessionary time. We are making a cut now, and the lags are going to be there. I just don't think they want to get ahead of themselves, cut too much, and then fan the flames of inflation by getting demand stoked higher than where it is. So I think they're going to take their time. So what does that mean for stocks if the market's expecting four, only going to get two, especially the small caps? Yeah, it, it's the big call here. And I think you have to kind of look at what this leadership is looking like in the market. You look right now, 
We are looking at things like financials, health care, utilities. These are things that are leading the market. You know, financials, you've got almost 90 percent of that sector above their 20 day highs, taking a little bit more of a defensive tone, looking at companies that have good dividends, good balance sheets, solid earnings. This is a defensive play for the market. So you want to be in there. You want to take advantage of things. But I think the sectors we're starting to see are a little bit more defensive in play. And that's where you need to be. Why is defensive right this time? Because we're going to leave it at that because they're going to just continue into the stock market and equity markets and so forth. So I'm on the same bandwagon as she is. I, th I think the con there is a contraction and an additional contraction coming. Uh, so I I'm on the equity positions. I'm a little bit, I'll, I'll go on her bandwagon. I'm a little bit defensive on that as well. I own financials as well as utility stocks uh, for that defensive measure. So, the, but it is in the stock channel. I know guys, but if you have interest in this, let me know down below if you, there's some other areas you want me to talk about, but basically, it's here's what we're seeing you know based on today's data mbs's are down eight ticks right now so that basically nothing rates are going to stay right where they are but we had a live event uh earlier today that we had and we hopefully we clarified clarified a lot of the mortgage programs and a lot of just confusion people have in the market so if you want to check that out what loan program is best for you if you're looking to buy your first house maybe your first investment property check out that video i'll post it right up there but here's now where we're going into tomorrow and friday there's huge data coming out and it has us kind of on edge right now because I don't know how this data is going to come in. What is it? Well, it revolves right around with the Federal Reserve's monitoring. And so what she was saying is, you know, there might still be a chance that, you know, their inflation starts to uptick a little bit and so forth. And the reason being is my take on it is when you have the equity markets, stocks, bonds, cryptocurrencies, everything rising as much as it has, it has this wealth effect on people that, you know, they're seeing their portfolios go up. And this is basically the bifurcation that she was saying the have and have nots. So if you don't have any money and you don't have assets, you're, you're getting hammered right now because interest rates on, on the, the cost of your what you're purchasing on credit cards is you know 15 to 20%. But if you have money, even safe havens like savings accounts right now are offering 5% in returns. So that's the disconnection here that a lot of people just don't understand. But this is going to change tomorrow. And why? Well, because we have this information coming up. GDP, the number is going to come out tomorrow. The expectation, the last reading was one four, it's expected to you know, basically double. If this goes in, then the Federal Reserve is going to say, okay, well, the market's a little bit stronger than we anticipate. But then if you look at the jobless claims, where are those going to go? And we now with the, we know the Federal Reserve's main focus, the main focus now is on jobs. Well, this is going to be a huge report coming out tomorrow. So that's tomorrow before the opening bell. So interest rates and the markets will be affected by this tomorrow. And then on Friday, before the bell opens, because you'd either have to get your rate locked in or your stocks purchased the day before or sold, you'd have to move over to here. And on Friday, we have the PCE number, the number one engage, the uh, number one number that the Federal Reserve monitors in regards to inflation. It's right there. So that's what we're saying between tomorrow and Friday, it is all data that the Federal Reserve is going to truly monitor closely. And that will be ma making major effects on the equity markets and the bond markets. So come back tomorrow morning. We'll let you know how these numbers came in and how that affected the markets. But that's the report for today. My name is Dan Frio. I'm actually a loan officer. I'd love to work with you. Okay. I work at ServeBank and I'm licensed because of it. ServeBank is a federally chartered bank. Uh, that means I'm federally chartered chartered throughout the whole country. So no matter what state you live in, I can help you. If you live in Puerto Rico, I can help you. And I'd love to help you. How to find out more about me and my team, just go to the rateupdate.com. Here's our website and you can find everything you need to know about us right through here. If you'd like to call us, well, instead you could do put in your application right here. You can check out and see if we have any grants right through here for, for you. But if you're out there and you're like, hey, Dan, can I just call? Well, yeah, you could do that as well. Just scroll down to the bottom. We'd love to talk to you. And our 800 number is 844-775-5626. Or you can reach me personally. Yes, it's me at dan at the rateupdate.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys. God bless. Have a fantastic evening. And I'll see you back here, hopefully, first thing tomorrow morning. Have a good night. See you then. Bye-bye.